Hi, my name is Alexa Bischoff, and in this podcast today, I will be discussing and analyzing a Sunday on Le Grand Jacques, created by George Seurat from 1884 to 1886. Let's begin with a brief history of George Seurat. Seurat was born on December 2nd, 1859 in Paris, France. Seurat's earliest art lessons were taught by his uncle. From 1878 to 1879, Seurat was enrolled in classes at L'École des Beaux Arts, which is not too far away from the Louvre in Paris. When Seurat was 20, he visited the Fourth Impressionist Exhibition. There he saw Impressionist painters such as Monet and Pissarro. These works and arts ultimately influenced Seurat's own thinking. <clears throat> I think it's important to give a little bit of a description behind the actual Grand Jacques. In Paris, there is the Isle de Grand Jacques, which translates to the Island of the Big Bull. This island is in the Seine River, which runs through the heart of Paris. Le Grand Jacques is in the northwest of Paris, which is where the middle and upper classes often congregated. Le Grand Jacques is Seurat's largest painting at 7 feet tall and 10 feet wide, as well as his most well-known. Many argue that this painting was a turning point in art during the late 19th century. Le Grand Jacques was something that had never been done before. The painting is made of oil and took around two years to complete. Seurat painted this piece in segments, first starting with a layer of horizontal brushstrokes of complementary colors. Now, for those of you who don't know the technicalities behind art like me, complementary colors are colors directly opposite of each other in the color spectrum. For example, red and green or blue and orange. Seurat was very intrigued in the science behind light and color. It is claimed that principles of harmony and contrast of colors written by French chemist Michel Eugène Chevreau and the essay on the unmistakable signs of art by painter and writer Humbert de Superville shaped Seurat's artistic development. Seurat was quite the forward thinker for his time. He wanted to find a way to convey a natural light without having to mix the perfect shade on a palette. The mixing of colors on a palette was a huge component of the Impressionist movement. This technique was used by painters such as Monet. By not mixing the colors, though, Seurat was able to strip the colors to their most pure forms. He used a fresh new method that was later coined as pointillism, a type of divisionism. The second segment to Le Grand Jacques was little closely placed points or dots of unmixed colors on top of the horizontal brush strokes, allowing for your eye to receive the light and mix the colors in your head. Essentially, your eyes are blending the two true colors in your head to form a different color. This is known as the optical mixture, much different than the technique used by painters before him. Um, this method of pointillism was groundbreaking for its time. Surratt used the word neo-impressionism when describing his newfound way of painting. The journey to the finished product of Le Grand Jacques required a lot of planning. Seurat did dozens of oil paintings and sketches outside of, um, on Le Grand Jacques before beginning work on the actual painting. He would sketch Parisians of different classes, all who were enjoying the escape from the busy city life. Seurat would then go back to his studio and decide which characters should be in the painting and where. The description of Le Grand Jacques is quite interesting. All of the Parisians portrayed in the painting are in profile except the little girl dressed in white. Um, there's also a receding diagonal line along the river that creates an illusion of space. It uh, is a good representation of the style and fashion of um, the people of France. Some art critics argue that it shows the growing of the middle class, while others say that it's a representation of social tensions between the different classes, which can be seen by the lack of interactions in a public space. Um, Le Grand Jacques is currently on display in Chicago at the Art Institute.